Hi, I'm Michael. I'm a business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an investor. I'm kind of funny improv artist, and I am quite neurotic. And I'm really into geeking out of a technology, which should play well in today's podcast. Um, I'm also a TV host and your host right now for what we call the Second Scene Podcast. It is a Dweebs Global production where you can go for free mentorship help. We have over 600 mentors from around the world. They speak every language. They can help you from resume writing to mental health. So it's dweebsglobal.org. It's confidential and it's free. I swear it's free. So I'm here today with Deanna Iracheta. I'm told that I'm saying it almost right. Deanna is a bit different than our normal themed episodes in that her scenes are all tightly related, but equally, if not more impressive. Dana, Deanna is a mechanical and manufacturing engineer, and she's known as the Latina engineer. And we will find out why as we go through this podcast. So, but thank you for being here with us today. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, so you are still young, but I'm gonna ask you how young you were when you started getting into engineering. It was like the I... first time. You know, well, I went for college for it, but I didn't know what I wanted to do until I was a sophomore in college. So around 20, 19, 20. Um, so yeah, that's when I was like, okay, engineering it is. I kind of knew it was STEM, but that's when I was like, this is it. <laughs> so when you were younger, elementary school, high school, were you into technology or into building or... Not design? really. I mean, I, I was being curious, but I didn't really like, you know, you didn't really understand what were your options. Uh, I always liked math, even though everybody always hated math. It was just, it was easy and it was something I could do in Spanish and in English. Like when I got here, there was no, like, it was easier to understand that class than any other like, classes. Uh, but then I didn't know what to do with it until I started learning about careers, opportunities in STEM. And that's when I was like, oh, I can do engineering. We have math and I can actually get to explore how things work. Oh, got you. Um, so when did, what age did you move to the United States? I was 12 years old. Okay. So how much, how was your English at that point? Non-existent. <laughs> I knew how to say hi and how are you and sit. <laughs> really? So how was that just dropping into, that's almost, that's junior high, I guess, at that point? Or Yes. So I, I always took classes in school. You know, you had like your English class when I was in Mexico, but it never stuck with me. It was just, I just, it was not my thing. And then I got here and it was just, here you go, have fun. And I had no idea what my teachers were saying or anything. I did have some bilingual classes, like, but they would help me, like uh, English learning classes. But it was just kind of like one day you just start making sense of it because you have no other option <laughs> but to learn it. But I think that's the best way how I learn. It's just like throw me at it and I'll figure it out on my way there. And then one day I remember I was actually laughing at the jokes that my teacher was saying. And I was like, I didn't know what you were saying just a month ago. It's, it took you that like that quickly. You you caught on and you were catching it. It, it took me maybe like two, three months to start making phrases out of what people were saying. I remember I had my first quiz coming up and my dad me he got an email he's like so your first quiz I'm like what is that quiz what are you talking about I had no idea what the teacher said at all like nothing <laughs> so did the, I guess they were not easy on you or you, did, you did you fail <laughs> that, like the complete first semester or how do you even that's when my dad realized that I didn't know what I was doing and he would sit with me every night and go through all everything that I went through in school okay did he speak English was he Okay. Yeah, so. that's the reason why we came to the U.S. It was my dad's job that got he got uh, transferred here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Bet you he had wished he had put you in some English schools uh, back where <laughs> you were. Where Where did you move from? Uh, Monterrey, Mexico. Okay. Do you yeah. get to go back? Do you get to go back there? And yeah, I go every year. Okay. Oh. Wonderful. It's so it's so nice uh, to have people born or to be somebody born in another country or have another country you can go back to. It's, you know, my wife was born in Spain. So it's so nice to have that, to go visit and see how other, you know, it's just, it's so different than America. It's, it's nice to have the, <laughs> the two different sides to things. So you decided, so engineering, I guess when you were doing math in high school, I know when I was younger, like that was not, that was not a woman's thing to do. Like females were not expected to do math or be well in math. Um, you're quite a bit younger than I am. It was it still the same way? I think I had a lot of support from my teachers. They always noticed that it was something that I enjoyed. Uh, so I, I do remember feeling that support and how they, they knew I liked it and they were like encouraged me to keep uh, working hard, hard at it. Um, I was like, I, tell you, I was a good 
student like I, I got good grades so they definitely saw that that I had like you know I want to do great in this like this was the, like it was kind of like my priority class other than all the other ones okay um is engineering something you can do in in I don't remember when I went to college I don't remember engineering being an option in pre-graduate school or in uh in college or in high school no in college even going to college I don't remember engineering being an option when I was there uh, I went to a community college and then I went to a four-year university. When I went to community college, I thought I was going to be a physics major because physics was what I took as a senior in, in high school. And it was like, okay, this makes sense. Let's go for it. Uh, and then I was in a program that was like for STEM students. And that's, I got a mentor and I kind of learned more about uh, the different uh, STEM careers. And that's how I was able to finalize, like, this is the path that I'm interested the most. The community college didn't have any engineering classes. So I took all my math and all my science. And then once I transferred to a four-year university, it was just straight engineering classes because I had already those two years in a community college to stick in math, physics, and gen ed. And then it was full on like engineering classes. The first semester was terrible, but you know, and then it took me three years to once I got to a four-year university, but you know, I liked it and I'm glad I stick with it. I really enjoyed it. I didn't see myself doing anything else, even though it was like really difficult. Um, but I mean, even when I, I finished and I started working, it was something that I really enjoyed. So definitely something that I, I guess I chose right. <laughs> There's a lot of different different types of engineering, right? Did, so you, did you have like a specialty in engineering or is there, when you go to school for it, do you choose a route? Yeah, so I did mechanical engineering. Uh, the school I went to only had mechanical, electrical and industrial. Uh, I did want to stay close to home. So it was kind of like the option that I had right there is to be like a commuter. But mechanical always was the one that I had more interest in. When you start taking your physics, you start seeing kind of like the different types of mechanics and like different types of physics. And I knew that when it gets to electricity and magnetism and all that stuff, it just didn't make sense in my brain. So I was like, I like more of like the stuff you can see, how they move, how it interacts. So I'm like, let's stick with that. And that's what works with mechanical. You know, you design things that you can feel, that you can see, that you can see move. So that was just kind of made it really clearly, but you have biomedical, you have chemical, you have, and I mean, I, I wasn't good at chemistry. So I was like, okay, definitely chemistry is not a good one either for me. So you kind of have to find out what you like and what you don't like. Yeah, chemistry is like in a whole nother language. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so mechanical, so that's building almost, is that building like products or? It, the, the area that I do is a lot of design. So right now I'm doing design for automation. Uh, before I was just doing design for fixturing. So a lot with the manufacturing, like what do we need? Like what thing to hold this piece or to make the robot be able to grab something. So it's just, you know, it's mechanical, but you get to design what works with other things. So, but a lot of the times you're working with like other engineers and they all put something together. Okay, have you, have you visited Tesla's uh, automation how they build their cars I know their robots there are just insane I have not <laughs> oh no are you into that at all I'm a big Tesla freak so not not a lot like so no. I haven't I haven't even like been curious about it <laughs> really okay because <laughs> they have some of the coolest robots they like yeah <laughs> um so what have you what are you working on currently what type of engineering or yeah I like just instance? I just started a new job it, today is my I finished my second week okay. so I went more from manufacturing and mechanical combined but more manufacturing processing and like all the everything and now I'm more a little bit more of a design for manufacturing so now I do all the prints all the three models I'm still getting kind of like introducing to that world but you know everything all the production has you know some type of automation now so I feel like it's something that is really relevant and it's growing and it's great to get exposed as early as I can. Uh, so that's going to be, you know, my learning where I'm going to be learning for the next few years. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know Amazon is their automation is also insane in the way that they've uh, the way that they've done their warehouses is pretty incredible. And that's all automation. 3D pro do you ever, what 3D programs do you work in? I know I've played with Fusion 360 and I've used SolidWorks. That's what I learned in school. And that just happened that the company that I've been to we use SolidWorks. Uh, I know a little bit of Inventor. Uh, and then we were going to switch to one of my companies. We never did. Uh, but I feel like like if you know one, you can 
catch on on the other ones pretty quick, but it, it mostly depends on what the company that you're working for uses. Got you. Got you. So if people don't know, there's, there's so many different programs that you can design 3D objects in. And these programs are pretty incredible because you can actually create like an engine or something in the program and watch it kind of operate like in They're the really program's fun. environment. It's pretty wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why do they call you? I, mean, I, don't know why, I know why they call you the Latina engineer, but how did it come <laughs> about that you are the Latina engineer? uh well <laughs> I don't even like how did I even tell Cause, like something that I always mention is like by no means do I represent all the Latinas in engineering like don't don't like don't think that I feel like that way at all but I was just it was you know like it just kind of came to me like the name I just wanted to share my experience of like what I was going through you know from being an immigrant learning English going into a field that you're also a minority um and then once, when I was in school, I always felt like I didn't fit in, you know, it was only two girls out of 80 students. And then once I got to work, that's when I felt the most comfortable. I felt like nobody was telling me how, like nobody made me feel like I couldn't dress like I wanted or like I couldn't be like how I am, like outgoing or fun or whatever. Uh, and everybody, even like, especially my boss really treated me really equally. Like if I, had, I was just one of the other boy engineers. So I wanted to share that, that I could be wearing, like, and it started with the story where I was wearing a pink, fluffy jacket and I went into the production floor and I was putting pulling apart a piece of equipment and then I put it back together I took the measurements whatever and nobody told me anything because they were all used to me working there for a little while now and it just felt really great that I was able to do that that I didn't get any looks from anyone or anyone saying like I'll do it for you or whatever so I wanted to share that that it wasn't so bad like that it was like it was welcoming if you found the right environment to be in and it really did something that you like and then from there, it just grew from being a, a blog, you know, a website. I just, I opened it up like, this, it's going to be a web uh, blog. And I know my, like, I still don't write perfect in English, but I'm just going to, you know, it's the message. It's not the grammar that I'm going to share. <laughs> and then I opened an Instagram account. And I think that was the biggest thing because that's how I found other Latinas in engineering. And from there, that's how I started finding people. And I think the biggest impact was that I was able to connect with other Latinas that are in other parts of the country, in other parts of the world, and able to have that group that you can either talk about, like the experiences that you have, share. If I share one of my stories and other people feel like empowered or they feel like they can share theirs too. So the network is, it's, it's, it means a lot more than you know that I expected. And I found way more people than I thought. So it has really made a difference. And right now I'm focusing on, on that, of making sure that I'm not only meeting them, but like they can meet each other and like having networking events and things like that. And that's great. It's such a great message to put out there. That, don't be afraid. It's, you know, it might've been, it might've been a, a men's environment before, but that doesn't mean it has to be uncomfortable or they're gonna treat you differently. Uh, I think a lot of times with the message, that's not what people hear. They, it sounds scarier than that. Like it, <laughs> it sounds like yeah. you, you earned your way in and they're, they have the respect that they're supposed to have for you. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot of, you know, breaking stereotypes, you know, from being a woman, from being an immigrant, a Latina. It's like, and making sure that, you know, sometimes I, I feel uncomfortable, but I have to reassure myself that I feel to, I have to like, you know, fight for being treated equally, for feeling comfortable, for being accepted that like, just like two days ago, I was called an intern, just like, I, and I told them, I was like, is it because I'm too young? And they said, no. And I was like, then why so like you get to those people you get to those situations and you have to be upfront about it like I'm not gonna take you thinking that like people thinking that I'm not Hispanic just because they see that I'm an engineer before they learn that I speak Spanish and then trying to find another category that I fit that they're more you know comfortable with but being outspoken be like no I'm a Latina and I'm an engineer and I'm proud of that right I think some I think people just naturally jump to stereotypes or to what they think you are um and it's great that you step up and you're like <laughs> 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 nope <laughs> you have you have a heavy accent but i think you speak way more intelligently than i speak <laughs> <So> <laughs> the accent does not mean anything <laughs> you speak very you well know, so. and thank you and that's a whole nother whole thing you know I, if you had told me that you know five years ago I would have been so uncomfortable by that I would have been like oh no my accent and these things that you learn these things that I learned from my dad being told that his accent made him sound more intelligent because he he knew two languages and you know from that experience I took it I absorbed it and I was like no I'm part of it like I wish I didn't try so hard to get rid of it and you know it changes the way you see things completely right 
right? It'll naturally fade over time. I don't think there's anything. <laughs> <You'll>, it'll, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be ev evolve throughout your life. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting to listen to yourself now, record it, and then I can we'll have recordings <laughs> and then hear how it is in <laughs> 20 years from now. Yeah. What's, so you started the nonprofit. What's the, the name of the nonprofit? Is called the Lat Latina Engineer, correct? The nonprofit is still, you know, in the process of the paperwork and everything. Uh, the nonprofit is actually the Diana Iracheta Foundation. Um, there were some issues with being an engineer in the nonprofit and whatnot. Uh, but this is kind of going to be like together so that we can do scholarships because for the conference that I host, you know, annually, we want to be able to give the scholarships to minorities in STEM. So we needed to have a, like a feasible way to do it. Like last year we did a GoFundMe just so we could give those funds away to a student to go for their school education. So there's things that I'm still trying to figure out, but it's definitely something that I see that I made because I wanted to help people, not because I, because I know some people going like, oh, we're going to do like an LLC and like a business and things like that. And it's like, no, no, no. This has always been because I love helping people. Like even like whatever it was, like if I can do something to make it any better, I will. And it's something that it feels really nice that, you know, you not only did I make it through engineering, but I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to help out another and another, like as many people as I can to get through that point too. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. What does STEM stand for? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people don't uh, know that. Yeah. <laughs> the STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Okay. I feel like it's a relatively new term. I don't remember that being around <laughs> as a child, but I see things all the time now where there's STEM competitions and there's STEM robotics and there's STEM, is there? Yeah. No, no, go on. <laughs> and now we have STEAM. So now they're trying, like some people use STEM, some people use STEAM because they're trying, they're throwing the art in there. When you think about it, you know, I had mixed feelings about it at some point and now it's just like, no, like art does have part to do with engineering, to do with science, to be with creating things because I can't come up with a design for something without being creative to come up with those. So it's another thing that I like, now you have to like, you hear STEAM and you hear STEM, so. Okay, and you've accept, you accepted it? <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, I think both are just fine. <laughs> yeah. When I was younger, I wish that I had understood what art was. I always thought that art was painting and I couldn't paint <laughs> or draw. But there's so much more to art than that. I, I wish I had known that as a as a kid. I think there's a, a lot of overlap, and that's why it's so hard to make like, oh no, art shouldn't be in it, or art should be part of this, or science should be this, because there's just there's overlap with all of the careers. Mm -hmm. Oh, completely, and they're all, especially with like product design, and and I mean anything you create, even if it's not product design, you're creating automation. It's it's got to be appealing to the eye, otherwise people aren't going <laughs> to want to work with it, or they're not going to you know they're not yeah. gonna work in their places of business or their homes. Um, and that's all art. <laughs> so I, I was designing in Fusion 360 the other day a necklace for my employees for Employee of the Month. <laughs> and that was the extent of my art. It really wasn't that pretty, but it was, <laughs> it was an attempt at it. It was 3D. I 3D printed it. <laughs> what, are there, what good programs would you recommend young girls go into if they're interested in STEM or STEAM? Um, I know there is a lot of like coding boot camps. Uh, if they're more interested into the software and coding and all that, uh, even mechanical and electrical and so they have a lot of coding with it. So I think it's a good way of, you know, doing like problem solving because you have to come up with like a way to make it make sense and follow instructions and whatnot. Um, as far as, you know, there's other programs like SolidWorks that are free that you can start learning to start making prototypes and figure out how things work. Um, and then oh. Arduinos, Arduinos are an awesome way to get hands on and start programming and start seeing things like a uh, program like a little robot that is does something that the light turns on when you like have like motion or things like that. I think that's one of the most most fun because you get to to learn a lot. And like as a mechanical engineer, we started using Arduinos for senior design and we started doing a lot of electrical engineering. And we're just like, this is fun. Like you don't have to stick to just one area of engineering. You can overlap all the time. Yeah, because of COVID, I started programming on Arduinos for the first time. I actually taught I taught myself to solder for the first time nine nine months ago. I had <laughs> never soldered. To me, it was like this this uh, this technique of something that I could never do. It's it's not that hard, <laughs> but I didn't know that. It, I was like afraid of it. So there's so many great videos on YouTube uh, just to follow right along, and people really have some great uh, some great instructions. A to Z on how to do things. I, I created a bunch of a bunch of little projects. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> people should search though. I think people hear Arduino and they hear programming and they hear you have to put it together and solder and they get scared and, and they shouldn't be. No, and there's a lot of information out there. There are programs that you can literally copy and paste and then you can start just with like putting it together and you don't have to worry about the programming or you can do it the other way. So there's a lot, there's a lot of content on the internet that you can start learning how to do so many things. So definitely like don't be afraid of trying it out. And like an Arduino kit is not like that expensive either to like where you can get something small and start working with it. I think it was super fun. I think it's, it's a really great way to get kids into STEM to start seeing that engineering has more to do than just math and science. Yes, yes. I think Tinkercad is a really good one to start with. I haven't I haven't heard about Tinkercad? it. Tinkercad? Oh, kinda... <laughs> Tinkercad's a great one for people just to get going on. And you can plug in, they have Arduinos and uh, Uno's, I'm messing up the terminology, but you can plug them all in and get them working. And, yeah, <laughs> and it also has nice. a 3D building in it. It's, it's, it's a really simple program, but um, yeah, that's, that's great. So where, what else, is there anything else we should know about you while I have you on here? Uh, my conference, I guess. Uh, so we just started last year. It was the first time I did it. It was one week. We put it together. It was just a celebration for Latinas in engineering. We wanted to show, like, I wanted to show the diversity because, again, Latina engineer, like, we're all from different countries. We're all with different accents. With, like, so I wanted to showcase all of them, and I had, like, pictures of all of them. Like, I have them on my website. Uh, and it's just like a way to provide resources. We have speakers. We had workshops. We had the giveaways, the scholarships just so that we can like, I can provide like as many things as I can back to, to us, whether we're young professionals trying to, to figure like as another engin other engineer that maybe has more experience about, you know, a career advice or resume or like, how do I do this? Or students that are still trying to figure out what area in STEM or how to get their first job. So, and also the connection, the network, the network and realizing how many of us are out there when you don't see them in the classroom because you see like you're the only woman. But seeing that, you know, there's other Latinas like you that are interested in these things, and it's super cool to be able to meet each other. That's wonderful. What was that called? Uh, it's International Latina Engineer Week. Okay. Can people find that online? Are, they, are you planning it for next year? Yeah. So my website is latinaengineer.com. Okay. And in there, you can find the Instagram. You can find a section for the conference. You can find all the stuff that I do. It just kind of has its home on the website. Okay. So latinaengineer.com. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Well, thank you so much. I'm super impressed with what you've done and what you're doing and um, your websites and your Instagram and yeah, everything. Seriously, it's really neat to see. And all that stuff gets me excited. <laughs> thank you. Rick. More, more, more people out there engineering and designing and programming. I really, I really enjoy this. And, you know, you know, having a full time job and then coming home and, you know, having this is like sometimes it feels like a second job, but it's something that I enjoy so much that I can I can spend hours in here in my office just working on it, coming up with things or planning things. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Do you have any little projects you're currently working on at home? Uh, no, no. I have the, the conference that we're trying to make like grow. So we have that that we're constantly like even if it's in October, we're already planning. We have a comedy and we're kind of like, what do we need? And who do we need to contact to make this happen? Gotcha. Yeah, that's a, that's a full-time job trying to get that. Going, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good luck. Are you trying to get sponsors and other? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're trying to get sponsors. I mean, again, that's why we wanted to become a nonprofit to be able to do that. Uh, we, you know, last year we had about 300 uh, people register. We're aiming to have about a thousand people this year, just because, for example, with my Instagram account, I had less than half of the followers that I have right now. So I've definitely seen being able that that grew and being able to, to connect as many Latinas as we can. Gotcha. Well, great. Well, good luck. If there's anything we can do, let us know. We'd love to help. But thank you so much for being on the podcast. Again, you can find out Find Diana Iracheta at latinaengineer.com. And again, this has been a Dweebs Global production where you can get free mentorship help, anything from resume writing to mental health to probably engineering and Arduino wiring. I'm pretty sure we have mentors that can help you with that as well. So please go to dweebsglobal.org and it's free.